la victoire en chantant nous ouvre la barrière, la liberté guide nos pas. Liberty, freedom, we all would like to have some of it, and the French Revolution gave us a lot. Some wars followed after that, and in general, it got better. But if we are watching television and seeing something we don't like but doesn't hurt us, is freedom not really for us what is acceptable to us? Um, I would like to talk about my two war heroes, which are Helena and Derek. You never heard of them, probably, because they had a secret service. Derek, he worked on a rubber plantation in uh, Malaya until he moved to England to find a wife after World War I. Dr. Helena Wright was a women's rights advocate, and she had three clinics in London. And after World War I, so many men were dead that it is said that 1.2 million women could not find a partner. And of the men who returned from the war, many had post-traumatic stress disorder. And I'll keep it simple for you, they couldn't get it up. And there was no alternative to get pregnant in those days. There was no clinic who at fertility treatments or whatever. Dr. Helena Wright experienced many of these things in her clinic, and she decided to look for a solution, and the solution was Derek. Derek was a man who liked to be around women. He had already proven his fertility, and she talked to him. If I could arrange meetings between you and couples, who have an incredible urge to form a normal, beautiful family, would you help them? And he said yes. So Helena arranged that the families would send a telegram when the ovulation would occur, and then Derek would turn up at their house, a bunch of flowers, I hope, and the man could stay or go, but something had to happen. And then, after he left, the couple would send another telegram when it had worked. And this way, we estimate that uh, Derek helped in the creation of 496 children. Somebody just said that I have hundreds. No, I'm in, uh, in the beginning of that career. Uh, as far as I know, at this moment, there are 96 children of which I know and there are three more on, on the way. So, let's put it this way, uh, I just heard that I will be father to three children. Um, <laughs> thank you, but I didn't do something special for it. It were the parents-to-be who did something special for that, because they had the incredible courage to look beyond the boundaries the boundaries of what society dictates. They said, I know, everything has to be picture perfect, Hollywood movie, uh, manager of the company of 50 years, marries his 21-year-old secretary, and they have 2.1 children, because that's the replacement rate. Well, uh, let me tell you, uh, the population in the world might be rising, but in Europe, it's steady or going down. And still, we are giving people feedback that they should take care of, not too many children, because the world is getting overpopulated. But tell that to a person who inside feels the wish to have a family. Uh, if you never experience it, it's incredibly strong. And through a coincidence, I learned that not all good people are able to become good parents because they just miss one sperm cell and a bit of luck. I feel it as an extraordinary honor that in this society where we are bombarded with uh, documentaries about uh, serial killers and so on, that these people have the confidence to come to my home and to be open about their problems. Some have had 15 years of medical treatment unsuccessful and basically say, 
we never thought there would be a person like you. Let me tell you, there are many, many persons like me. <coughs> I see them on the internet. My name is, my name is Hans, 28 years old. Uh, I do sports, I look good, and I want to help. That's basically what they think a woman wants to know of the biological father of her child. When I saw this for the first time, I wrote about myself one and a half pages about my motivation, about contact with the children, because we can decide what we want, but we create children which want contact. And that is something which makes many people come to me. That is because they have rights too. They cannot speak yet. We decide for them. It's always a selfish de decision to have a child, but we must do our very best to give them a fair start in life. And that is what we have to do today. Listen and think of solutions for the future. I hope to be part of the solution. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, Ed Huben.